everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, I wanted to uh, go over like some just thoughts about Uziri and like her deck construction, because after I made the video that you just saw this morning, uh, just talking about the hero in general, I really just started having some fun and like throwing cards in a deck and seeing like how... I guess deck choices without knowing the whole set. We don't know the whole set yet, just for fun. Um, some deck choices would look. And what I realized is actually that it's going to be really fun to see what really good players come up with when it comes to deck construction because as powerful as her ability can be, um, she's going to have some really interesting choices when it comes to like what she focuses on. And I'll kind of show you why. So what do you have? What you see right here is well, besides these three, we take the spike out. Um, what you have these is like, these were not, is what I would consider Uziri's power cards, at least so far until we see more cards uh, in the set. So these are cards, and take that out. These are cards that um, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. These are cards that Uziri at cost two or less can really abuse with her ability to bring in after playing a stealth card first. So Command and Conquer is the obvious one, right? Uh, Death Touch is a big one. It can't be played from hand, but it can be played from Banish. Um, when it hits a hero, create a Frailty, Inertia, or Blood Rot Pox token under their control. Erase Face, I think this will be more of a cyborg card, but this will be one that's played. And obviously, like most of Arachne's power cards, Leave No Witnesses, Eradicate, and Surgical. And then finally, Shake Down the Uziri Specialization that's pretty obvious, right? So you won't have to play all these in the deck, but these are like your choices, right, when it comes to power cards. So... Um, you know, and then you have your stealth cards. So if we bring in the stealth cards just at red right now, right, we have Sedate, which is three. We have Infect, which makes six. We have Backstab, which makes nine. We have Isolate, which makes 12. We have Wither, which makes 15. And that's, so we have 15 reds, uh, stealth cards, right? The way I'm looking at it, I think step one is like how many stealth cards are you going to need in the deck to constantly proc her ability or have the opportunity to proc her ability? Because whether you're playing for a game plan of I'm going to like bluff my opponent and just play stealth cards with reactions, that's an option. Or whether I uh, you start playing a lot of power cards and you use her ability really frequently, no matter what it is, you're going to want to play a good amount of stealth cards. I would say at least 20 counting your blues. But you want to play like... If hopefully she gets one or two more stealth cards in the set, because you honestly would want 20 some red stealth cards. And right now we only have 15. There's only 15 red stealth cards. You can run them at yellow, which y'all can't see over here, but you can run them at yellow. But really, that's what it is. So, you know, let's just say for argument's sake, you have a race face and a sideboard. Um, and then you keep Death Touch in, you keep Command and Conquer in, uh, you keep Leave No Witnesses in because a zero cost red. Um, Maybe Eradicate is more of a, um, maybe Eradicate actually stays in. Let's just say you keep Eradicate in, you keep in Shakedown, you keep in Surgical. So at this point, here is the interesting thing, a couple interesting points about the way her deck is going to work. So you have these cards like the Spike with Frailty, Spike with Inertia, and Spike with Blood Rot, right? All the Spikes. These read target attack action card with stealth gains plus three. So these will not buff Command and Conquer, Death Touch, Leave No Witnesses, Eradicate, Surgical, Raise Face, none of them. It won't, bu it won't buff any of them. However, it does buff your, uh, your stealth card. So it's really useful for that. Then you have cards like Shred, which are also very, very useful cards, right? But the thing with Shred is it's going to require your opponent to block in order to be used properly right so that's another kind of like thing you have to keep in mind as you're playing the card and then finally you have cut to the chase which probably will not be used very often in this set in this hero however cut to the chase only works on cards with contract like leave like surgical like eradicate but it's not going to work on cards in her kit normally so that one's probably out for the most part so here's the dilemma you run into um her attacks are really below rate. They're all for three. They're not like uh, Arachne where they hit the break point. Uh, they all hit for three. Um, so the reason they're doing that, in my opinion, the reason LSS is doing that is they want you to use Uziri's ability. Or you can play Infect and then uh, spike it with one of these and give it uh, six, make it for six. Um, the issue is these will be, can become dead cards in hand. So like if you draw into a spike, a shred a shakedown and um, you know, a random card that's not stealth. All of a sudden 
if they don't block, technically Spike and Shred are dead cards in hand. They really are. Um, you could play Shakedown for six, but you won't get its ability, and it kind of sucks. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see like what strategy you go with, because if you don't put these Spikes in the deck, or you don't put shreds in the deck with well, shred i count shreds an attack reaction but i don't count it as a true attack reaction because it requires the opponent to block in order to do anything it's kind of like route right like at least route gives a buff when so the opponent doesn't attack shred literally does nothing if they don't or opponent doesn't block shred literally does nothing if they don't block literally nothing so it can get stuck in your hand if your opponent decides not to block and my initial thought and this is speaking in an aggro player is one of two things Either A, I'm just not going to block Yuziri ever. I'm going to make her have a power card in her hand. I'm going to make her have a Command and Conquer. I'm going to make her have a Death Touch. I'm going to make her have um, a Shakedown or um, a Surgical Extraction to Banish, right? I'm going to make her have those cards because if she doesn't, I'm just going to take the three damage and move along my day and then come back at you with a four-card hand. Or even if you spike it with Blood Rod off a two-card hand, I'm going to take the six and then I'm just because I you didn't disrupt my hand at all. Um, and I'm just going to come back at you right now. If you can put inertia token on it, like spike with inertia, then it kind of changes the game a little bit. Right. Because um, or not not just inertia because you can't arsenal. But if you come at them with a spike of frailty, then you have an issue. Right. Because it creates a frailty token, which then hurts their attacks from arsenal and their weapons. So as a ninja player, that would suck. That would turn off my Kadachis. However, it's just going to be interesting to see, like, I think opponents are going to do one or two things depending on the deck. I think either A, you're going to have, like, the aggro base heroes who basically say, like, okay, come at me. I don't care. I'm going to make you have a great card every single turn, which then as a user, you're going to have to. And then the opponents, like, Oldheim, um, even, like, a slower Reinar, um, like, a any 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 deck that thrives off two-card hands, like an Icelander. I think Icelander is going to give her trouble regardless because of ice, but... Oldheim, Icelander, like slower Reinar, um, these these the even Arachne, heck, even Arachne, these these heroes that can block six every single turn and not worry as much, and then just outvalue you over on hit effects. I I'm gonna be interested to see like how that affects it because with Yuziri's kit, you basically know either she's going to hit you with a three power stealth that she then buffs, or or like takes away your block, or she's gonna hit you with a six power attack. Because it's cost two or less, and in flesh and blood, nine on times out of hundred, a two cost attack is six power, with the with the exception of like one or two attacks. So it's just gonna be interesting to see what people do, um, and kind of like how they approach the hero. I'm not saying the hero is bad by any means. I'm saying like someone's gonna unlock the best way to play this deck. It's just gonna be really interesting to see because all the pieces you want to play don't synergize with each other a hundred percent, right? Like. Command Conquer doesn't synergize with Shred or Spikes, right? Uh, leave, Eradicate, and Surgical don't synergize with Spikes. Cut to the Chase doesn't synergize with any of the stealth attacks, right? Um, I think Nimbleism might actually be a really good card in this deck, uh, being able to hit these for like se uh, six or seven, um, but it all depends. Might not really good card, but a card that you could use. Um, Razor might be one that people might use. It's just... That's the that's kind of the weird thing. And then the second the last thing I want to say is Black Tech Whispers. These are Uziri's this is Uziri's like boots. This is her signature equipment, at least so far. She wears the black techs in her artwork, but she's not gonna have a way to bring them back as easy, right? Um is rural Uziri gonna be a thing, right? Um maybe. I don't know. Um but she's not going to have as much way to make silver as Arachne did because she's not using a ton of contract cards, right? Like, in my opinion, the only contract cards you use are Leave No Witnesses, Eradicate, and Surgical, right? You might throw in maybe a Plunder the Poor or something. I don't know, some like random zero for four. But those are basically it. So how are you going to bring these back, right? Or are, you, are these going to become basically like a Snapdragon Scalers where you use them on a really big power turn? That could be an option. But the difference is they kind of work like Breeze Rider Boots. The attack has to hit for it to them proc right it's not like snapdragons where you can just use it so it's gonna be really interesting to see i think she's gonna have one of the most hardest deck constructions we've seen um because her cards naturally don't synergize with each other 100 percent yet um so it's gonna be really fun to see what opponents do and what people do i do think at least initially she could run a ton of reds because she never has to really technically pay for the two cost she just sinks a red basically so you play a red zero for three sink it play command and conquer play another red zero for you sink it play death touch 
you know, so on and so forth. I think she could run very few blues, maybe like like nine to twelve blues personally, um, and still be able to execute her game plan. But it's gonna be really fun to see, really fun to see how people play the deck. Um, I'm really excited to see how people play the deck. Uh, it's gonna be fun. But let me know what you think. I wanted to play. This, I wanted to give this video out because I want people to kind of give me their thoughts on like maybe how the how the hero is gonna be approached. We haven't seen all the cards yet, so. You know, uh, definitely wait for that if you want to. I just thought it'd be kind of a fun video to kind of talk over with the community and see what you think. But yeah, if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not me, totally fine. Go to our Fleshbug Prayer, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. Join the Patreon down below if you want to support the channel. Uh, some good benefits in there. Um, nothing too crazy, just some added stuff for the community to enjoy. Uh, and then um, join the Discord down below as well if you want to and join the discussion. We have some really good community members in there who welcome you with open arms. And, yeah, I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.